Hi, I'm Harriet Seeger from Radcliffe Cardiology, and I have with me today Dr. Justin Davis. Um, Dr. Um, Justin Davis is a consultant cardiologist at the Imperial College NHS Trust and presenter of Life from the Hammersmith. Hi, Justin. Nice to have you with us today. Hi, Harriet. Good to be here. Hi. Could you tell us a little bit about the concept behind Life from the Hammersmith, please? Sure. No, Life from the Hammersmith is uh, a partnership between Imperial College Healthcare and NHS Trust and Radcliffe Cardiology. And the idea is to take the very latest clinical techniques and research concepts and to put them in place in the clinical environment and to demonstrate how we can use them to better serve our patients. Okay, and then can you tell us a little bit about the next one, which is happening on the 13th of April? Um, is, I understand it's about IFR and IFR Scout. Can you tell us a little bit about the differences between the two as well? Please? Yeah, sure. So we will be using uh, these two new technologies uh, in a case of complex PCI and showing how we can use them to simplify uh, PCI. Now, what I mean by that is often we see an angiogram, there's nasty disease there, it's very tempting to put stents in many locations. We now know using physiology that in many cases we could better uh, implant our stents into more appropriate places by doing an assessment beforehand. So using these two techniques, both of which don't require the use of adenosine, we can firstly locate vessels which could potentially benefit from stenting using IFR. And then we can map out using IFR scout where in those vessels the biggest pressure losses are occurring. And why that's important is if we can see where these biggest pressure losses are occurring, we can implant stents to cover those locations, potentially give our patients the biggest amount of benefit for the shortest length of stent. Okay, and is there a much clinical evidence to support their use? Well, certainly we know that stents uh, used correctly can help to uh, relieve uh, anginal symptoms. And I think that's a really important uh, nugget of, of information here. But often we implant stents uh, perhaps without as much evidence in an in individual artery that there would be a true benefit of uh, anginal relief. And one of the beautiful things about using physiology, it, it enables us to detect which arteries have a limitation to blood flow and potentially could benefit from being opened up. So what these two techniques do it, it, it enables us to simplify assessment without the requirement for adenosine, so measurements are typically made in, in five seconds. And of course, this benefit is maximally realised when you're assessing three or four arteries where constant administration of adenosine or other vasodilator products takes a lot, lot of time. Okay, I think that sounds about well. Um, looking into the future, um, what vision do you have um, in terms of physiology in the next five years? Well, I think it's going to be important that physiology, rather than being seen as a, a policeman which stops us doing PCI, becomes an important part of the DNA of a, of a PCI procedure. So I think that if we can simplify it, we can build continuing evidence base to support its use, and we can show in studies such as Syntex 2 and FEM3 that it's a very, very important tool for improving outcomes, then I think we're going to serve our patients much better by uh, deploying stents to where they should be uh, positioned in the artery to give them the maximum relief of the anginal symptoms. Well, that sounds fantastic. Well, thanks so much for that brief insight, and we'll look forward to the live case on Monday, um, the 13th of April, at 2.30pm GMT time, and I hope as many of you can join us as possible. Thanks for your time today, Justin. Look forward to seeing you then. Thanks very much.